Given the hundreds of millions of dollars in our tax money they receive, you'd think astronomers wouldn't be in a place where everything surprises them and they create more questions than answers. But that's where we are. A new study is showing that space dust begins to clump together and aggregate in tiny sizes. But as they get bigger, the stick becomes more and more unlikely, more often leading to bouncing off or breakup of the larger clumps upon impact. This, of course, is a big problem because their common thinking is that dust collides in protoplanetary disks around stars, leading to the formation of planets. This idea is thrown into chaos, as it is now understood that the clumping that should form planets is less and less likely to do so, the bigger they get. The new study leaves off with the claim that planetary formation theory has been thrown for a loop. So what's the solution, since we know that, obviously, planets do form? The answer lies in the flaw of their study. They isolated only the kinetic interactions of the dust, and gravity bringing them together. There are three things that are present in protoplanetary disks that make their analysis unrealistic, since they ignored them, and therefore coming up short, and those are water, electromagnetism, and resonance. Let's see what we mean. First, there is water vapor around every star. After the star forms and becomes an energetic spinning sphere magnet, the disk around it is populated by more than just the dust, but by water vapor as well. This has been known for years, and they continue to discover water vapor in these planet-forming zones, as they did in another new discovery just this week. The water makes things stickier in space. Think of two clumps of dirt, and you toss them together to collide. Are they more likely to stick together if they are dry or wet? Obviously, the wetness makes them stickier, and while many things are different in space, this one is the same. Up next, it's electromagnetism. The water in the dust is not neutral but charged and inside of an electromagnetic field. This forms well before the planets form and is comprised of the solar wind electric field, the heliospheric current sheet, and the interplanetary magnetic fields of the star. These not only make the dust and the water vapor even stickier, but they provide attractive forces and pathways that group and assist in the clumping and aggregation. Lastly, the motions of the material are not as random as many might think. Resonance is a real thing, and the star is the resonator of the planetary system. Its different resonances determine the specific orbits that are most likely within the disk, and act as a third and potentially most important factor in overriding the kinetic bounce and breakage factor, allowing for the forces of attraction, clumping, aggregation, and ultimately planetary formation to win the battle. It's electromagnetic, resonant, and chemical. And by ignoring those in favor of strictly kinetic analysis, the scientists have made a significant error in thinking that the planetary formation puzzle is getting harder to solve. In reality, it's not. FYI, this should also play a role in stellar formation at the galactic scale as similar forces exist in the galactic disk, especially of spiral galaxies. I hope this was informative. Water, electromagnetism, and resonance. And we've got planets that we see today. Be safe, everyone.